today's climate scenario by 2050, as many as 150 million women and girls globally may be pushed into poverty as a direct result of climate change. And food insecurity caused by climate change is expected to increase as much as 236 million more women and girls. So this creates many considerations for women to migrate. And climate change amplifies existing gender inequalities uh, and posing unique threats to health and safety, which sometimes we are not necessarily connecting all these issues. But we need to make sure that we understand that no crisis is gender blind and our response cannot be gender blind either. So we live in a world where gender-based discrimination has made that women and girls have limited access to land, to other natural resources, and also to decision-making, for example, for financial services, for social capital, for technology. For many women around the world, this will impact in their decisions to, for example, migrate in the context of climate change because of scarcity of natural resources and seeking job opportunities. But this immediately puts them at risk of human trafficking, for example. What we have now is a very solid body of global normative standards and legislation around the world for to protect uh, labor rights for migrants and their families. Um, this is a duty of the state, and we must never forget that the state is responsible to protect its, its citizens, to report to them, to have accountability. So legal frameworks are essential, and there has been a lot of advancement in terms of safe working conditions, access to essential services. Our issue is that they are not always enforced. There's not always a adequate funding to make sure that these services reach the populations intended, and also there is very limited evaluation effort. It really identifies that women migrants face a heightened risk of gender-based violence, including human trafficking, and also the barriers to access to services, for example, for added, adequate sexual, reproductive, and mental and health services. There is discrimination with a my, migration status, access and employment, social security, education, housing, legal documents, such as birth or marriage certificates, really puts them at a disadvantage when they want to seek justice, when they want to seek provision of protection. Uh, they are there's usually a discrimination that we don't see, and it's the, the different forms that discrimination can happen against one particular person because of their sex, their age, their migration status, a racial discrimination. So they all can come together and really produce barriers for um, women and girls to not receive services, to, to have a violations of their human rights. But this recommendation mandates, this mandates state parties to ensure that migration and development policies are gender responsive, that they include sound disaster risk consideration, and that the factors of internal displacement and migration are understood and that there are services throughout the continuum of the migration. So this information has to be incorporated into national and local plans and be monitored. Um, so that uh, women and girls can be protected. What we need the most is to invest in the collection, analysis, and dissemination of sex disaggregated data. It's usually not uh, collected for climate change and migration to support evidence-based evidence policies. So this is what we really need to make sure that we include uh, the populations that are migrating, ask what are their needs, and be able, including to collect data that can be compared to know where we are advancing and where there have been challenges. It is also important to have policies that address the specific situations of vulnerability, uh, like the heightened uh, risks um, in terms of uh, trafficking and how they are exacerbated by the climate crisis. 
And then financial resources to ensure the meaningful and equal participation, participation of women affected by climate change, especially for women in the global south, women from small and developing states, uh, to have a seat at the table because they are the experts uh, in decision making. Years ago, in the Commission on the Status of Women, all ministries of gender equality around the world come together to discuss this very topic uh, in New York around International Women's Day. And the priority theme was achieving gender equality and empowerment of all women and girls in the context of climate change, environmental, disa uh, environmental and disaster risk reduction. And I invite everyone to come to UN Women's website and look for Commission on the Status of Women. And then there you will see what states have agreed to, to protect women and girls. So in this particular year, which was 2022, the commission reaffirmed the, that women's uh, and girls' leadership is essential to address climate change. Uh, that And it called for the United Nations system, for international financial institutions, and for multi-state platforms to support member states in their efforts to promote gender equality and, and to make sure that policies and programs are fully funded. It's imperative to recognize that there are unique vulnerabilities for migrant women due to their intersecting identities, uh, due to the vulnerability of being a mother. If you imagine a mother with children, what they could be forced to do just to make sure that they are surviving. And so really we need to make sure that we're taking into account their experiences. Uh, we need to ensure that migrant women can have education and capacity building initiatives that can enhance their participation in climate action. Also is fostering solidarity and collaboration around this topic because uh, we there are so many priorities. Uh, the world is increasingly in conflict and there are so many needs, but we can never forget that a resilient community, women who are empowered are the first component of a peaceful world. And so uh, uh, trying to address the very urgent needs without looking at how we build a more sustainable uh, community with increased participation is what's keeping us in, in conflict situations that will only increase. So what we see is prioritizing the perspectives of migrant women and girls also in youth we can build more resilient and sustainable communities in the face of climate change. So the invitation is to um, systematically be looking at what are, what are the policies. We have a website of the UN Women that looks at all the disaster risk reduction national action plans and programs and looking at the gender equality provisions, for example. For migrant, for migrant workers, we are also working with different other UN agencies to ensure that there are safe conditions. So it's looking at the life cycle of women at the needs not only for jobs, but for education and the opportunities for participation, and then making sure that we can hold governments and international organizations to account by reviewing their budgets invested in women, by evaluating their policies.